Hey guys, Matt here from ABMX. Uh, today we want to just run you guys through some information about our batteries. Um, a lot of people talking on the internet about ABMX batteries. Some people have the right information, some people have the wrong information. We wanted to dispel uh, some of the myths that are out there and just help educate you guys on uh, how these batteries are made, what's inside of them, the types of cells that we use, the BMS that we use, and, and the construction of these batteries. So we've got a pretty extensive range now for Suron and for Tellaria. We've got 72 volt, 42 amp hour, 72 volt, 57 amp hour, um, which is all the way up to 4.1 kilowatt hours. And then we've got a range of 60 volt batteries as well. So 60 volt, 53 amp hour, and 60 volt, 65 amp hour. So I've got with me here um, a Tellaria battery. Um, this is the, the case from one of the big Tellaria batteries, the 7257 um, amp hour, which this battery has got 4.1 kilowatt hours. And I just wanted to use this to sort of break down a few pieces of it and show you guys some more information about it. All right, with, with the cells that we have in here, um, these are all lithium ion cells. Um, they're not lipo cells. Uh, some people online have, have seemed to be confused just because these cells look like they might be a lipo battery, just like a one out of a, a drone battery. Um, RC planes, helicopters, uh, cars, they, they have cells like this that are LiPo. These cells that are in our batteries are definitely not LiPo cells. They're lithium ion cells. They're the same chemistry as you would get in a, in a round cell um, in an 18650 or 21700 cell. So the, these cells that we have in this battery here are 57 amp hour each. You can see them all in line here and then there's some more on the side here. So the construction of this battery is one parallel and 20 in series, which is a 72 volt. So with these cells, their, their continuous discharge rating is 6C, and that's all of the cells that we have. We, we swapped a while ago from LG to SKI cells because they just had better performance and they fit the form factor that we were looking for for the different batteries that we construct. So if you, if you take it that these batteries are 6C discharged and you multiply out the, the amp hours by 6C, this battery has the potential to discharge about 340 amps continuous. Now, that's what the cell can do, and that's not what the BMS can do on this battery, and that's not really necessary because that's, if you took voltage sag into it, that'd be about 25 kilowatts continuous of discharge, which is quite significant, especially for a battery of, of this size. So we, we derate things a bit by putting the BMS on there and then setting some limitations on those cells, but um, the cells are, are massively powerful and they're, they're not being worked anywhere near what they're capable of doing, which is another way we just add some extra safety into the way we construct these batteries. The charging side of these, um, stock chargers on, on, on Tellarias and Sarons are 10 amps. Um, the cells that we have in here can take 1C on charging. So 1C would be 57 amps of, uh, of current in charging mode. Um, the chargers that we use go up to about 20 amps. So again, we're sort of half, half that. Even with the 72 volt, 42 amp power, um, we're at 20 amps. Uh, the states, the US has 15 amp chargers just because of their power grid most of the time. Um, but it's, it's a good amount of power. You can charge things pretty quickly, but you're not gonna heat cells up when you, when you charge them at that rate. Um, and you can set regen on your bikes pretty high um, to, to get some power back and, and not be worried about these cells um, putting power out or, or taking power back in. They're, they're really a robust cell. In, in their construction, they've got a tab on the bottom and a tab on the top, um, which is a bit different. Some, some, some cells that look similar to this would have two tabs on the top, they're positive and the negative. It's a lot better having a, a tab on the top and a tab on the bottom. Um, better for heat, better for discharge, just better all around, and that's how these are constructed. So with, with the cells, if, if you guys were charging them, let's say we have a 20 amp charger, um, a lot of people have asked about lifespan of these. Um, I think thinking maybe that they're, they're a LiPo battery or they're different than the round cells. The, the actual lifespan on these batteries are, are these, these batteries are very similar to a lot of ones used in cars and the lifespan on these things is very good. So they've got a lifespan of about 80% capacity at a thousand charge cycles. Um, since that's just numbers and it, it doesn't really mean much. It basically, if, if you took uh, let's say 52 weeks in a year, you charged it twice a week, um, multiply that out, um, you'd be let's say 100 charges a year and multiply that by 10 years, you're, you're at 1,000. So if you, if you use this battery for 10 years and you charged it twice a week, you'd, you'd hit that 80% threshold, which I think is really good. 
Um, you know, these bikes haven't even been ex in existence for that long, but knowing that you have a product that is going to last longer than your bike's going to last if you keep riding your bike, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully instills some confidence in people that these, these are not just something that you need to buy um, every once in a while. This is going to last a long time, and we try to build all the aspects of this battery to make sure it's going to last. Um, from the case to what we do internally, and we'll, we'll talk through some of that stuff a little later in this video. The BMS that we have inside of our batteries now, so I'm just gonna open this up. Um, we'll, get, we'll get you in here to, to look a little bit closer, but I'll just tilt it forward so you can see. Um, this is an A&T BMS. Um, some of the older BMSs we used were the 125 amp continuous 300 amp peak, whereas this, this BMS that's in all of our batteries now is 180 amp continuous and, and 400 amp peak. Now, we don't actually rate these batteries that high because there's a lot of other factors that come into play to make them safe on bikes. And the, everything from the, the size of the cables that are used in the stock harness, um, the connections that are used, they just aren't safe for running that much power. If people want to run more power, we're going to be coming out with some more powerful batteries, but they're going to be basically from, from the power leads all the way down, uh, separate cables, able to deal with that type of power so people can do it safely. So we've, we've taken a more powerful BMS than really is necessary, and we've derated it just to make it stronger, more reliable, more robust, um, and it just perform better over time. We offer a two-year warranty on all of our batteries. Um, we're, we're the only people in the market that do that, and we do it because we're confident in the batteries we have. We'll support these things for that two years. You'll either get it fixed, you'll get it replaced, um, and we'll stand behind that product while you guys get out and have fun riding. The BMS has two temperature sensors for the cells. So on the side here, you can see these sit. We basically have one sitting alongside the cells down near the bottom, and we've got one that sits up, up towards the top. Um, the BMS also has a way to monitor the MOSFETs inside and keep track of the temperature there. So if anything temperature-wise ever gets out of uh, whack, then it'll shut itself down. The, the way that the, the BMS is connected to the cells is, is, is then sealed on top after it's soldered onto these connections. It's sealed and, and it's glued. Um, that just really helps to make sure with any sort of vibration, any movement, that, that nothing is going to go anywhere. These cells um, from, from, from the top of the BMS down are all fully potted, so everything at the bottom is, is not going to be able to, to shift inside of there, um, and the BMS at the top um, is locked in place as well. So on, onto the construction of the, of the case and then how the battery is assembled. I guess just to, to, to run everybody through um, the, the case itself and then the lid. So these are all, they're built out of stainless steel and stainless steel is, is the best material to really use for, for high powered batteries. It's got the best rating for if anything were to ever happen with heat or fire next to it or with inside of it, it's the safest material to have. If you have a battery that's built out of um, a lot of heat shrink put on it, I'm sure people have seen videos online of fires and it looks like firecrackers going off when these smaller cells are exploding and things are going apart. Um, if there ever was an issue, which we've never had a, a battery fire on one of our batteries, it would be contained inside of this case and it would be safe um, for you to get away from that if, if, if that ever happened. Um, a lot of precautions in place so that doesn't happen, but we wanted to build a battery that was going to be as safe as possible and as robust and reliable as possible too. So people taking batteries in and out of, of cases is often where the batteries that are built with a soft cover have an issue. You, you, you pull it in and out and there's screws along the sides of the, the, the cases. Um, just the wear and tear and movement inside of there can, can cause things to come loose. Pinholes get in there, water gets in, and uh, things just go downhill from there. So there's nothing going to be getting into these cases. So as you can see on, on the battery, the, whole, the full battery is lined with, um, with fiberglass um, on all the sides and, and on the bottom. And in, in the top here as well, um, a little bit hard to see and I'm not going to fully rip it apart here, but with all the cell connections up the top, you have to join the cells that are running on the side to the cells that are running in the, in the front of the pack. And we have a massively thick um, copper bar that sits in here that's machined out and, and connects those up. So there is no sort of issue with heat um, going between those two sides of the pack. The, um, the case itself then, um, this is stainless steel. It's, it's seam welded down the side and then the, the bottom is tapered to fit into the bikes um, and sort of sit right down in there where it needs to. Um, the, the, the process that takes place for that, um, being that it is welding, 
when you heat metal up and it, and it cools down, sometimes it deforms, it deflects a little bit. So if you guys get a battery and you've set it down and it, and it, and it, and it feels like it rocks a little bit, or if you look at it from the side and it, and it looks like it's not perfectly straight in a line on the side, it doesn't mean you have swollen cells in your battery. It doesn't mean there's an issue with your battery. These batteries are, are fully potted inside of these cases. So basically the shape that they are, if they're slightly deformed, that's the shape that they hold. And they shouldn't, they shouldn't deviate or flex or move from that. So um, you can rest assured that there, there is nothing wrong if, if these batteries are not 100% square. That's just the way that they're made and, and really there is nothing, nothing wrong with that. Oh, okay, I want to show you guys on the, on the bottom of the case. It's a little bit hard to see, but we do have, um, I've scratched off some of the, the glue on the bottom of one of these tabs, and um, we'll do a close up here and show you and show you what it looks like in the factory as well. But we've, all these cells are, they're, they're, not, um, they're not soldered together, they're actually laser welded together, uh, which is the best way to get low resistance and ensure these things stay together um, without adding anything extra um, into this pack. You can see all the connections of the balance wires. They're all glued on here as well. And then you see these feet that are sitting down here. These help hold that bottom of the battery off of the pack. This makes sure that nothing touches when the, when the battery is put down into the pack, um, when it's being potted. And then everything, basically, there's, there's purpose, on purpose there's gaps um, all over here to help the compound that it pots these batteries, get in all those cracks. Um, and fill that up. So we've, we've, we've been on a bit of a journey with these batteries and we're, we're, we're always doing the best we can with continuous improvement, finding things that don't work and improving upon them. Um, I think everybody can benefit from that knowing that like if you have a version of a battery that's maybe not as new as this battery, you have an issue with your battery, it's going to be replaced with a newer battery, it's going to be fixed, fixed in the same way that the newer batteries are being built. It's still going to last you for that two years. Um, we believe it's going to last you for a lot longer than that, but you're going to have guaranteed replacement if there's an issue within those two years. So some of the stuff we've done over time with continuous improvement on these is we've, we've switched cell manufacturers um, with a few different ones, LG um, and SKI is what we're, we're currently using that fit the form factors um, and have really good performance, really low voltage sag. I think when we, when we load test these batteries in the factory, um, at about 18 or 20 kilowatts, we only have about four volts of voltage sag, which is, is really good and they can hold that. Um, they won't go anywhere as, as power is put onto them. And another thing that we've done um, over time is we, we started with uh, soldering the cells together, um, getting really big solder gun, laying a big bead on there and getting these cells, um, basically the tabs overlap top and bottom and, and soldering them on. Well, that worked well. We've, we've gone to laser welding. Um, it's just a, a probably more of a, um, a high-tech way of doing it, more standardized, and, and it produces a really, really nice finish and a really good connection for those tabs together. So we've gone to that because it's better um, and we just never have to think about it again. We, we also, the very first batteries we had, now, now we're talking over, over a year ago, version one batteries weren't potted. And we found testing these batteries were professional riders and people riding hard. Riding a dirt bike's a violent thing to do, and we just needed a, a more robust way to making sure balance wires never came off and nothing ever moved. Um, so we've, we, we've gone to potting the batteries with a compound that's, a, that's sort of a semi-flexible, semi solid material um, that's used in, in potting all sorts of electronics, and, and that's what these batteries are potted with. They're filled all the way up to the top of the BMS, um, and that locks everything in place. Nothing can move, and we, we, we don't have any, we've never had any issues since then with, with balance wires or anything coming off of a, of a battery. The BMS, the BMS that's on this battery, like I said earlier, is, is a bit more powerful than we used to use. Um, and we've also worked with the Ant BMS um, guys and we have some custom firmware and some special sort of secret sauce that's in some of these BMSs to communicate directly with some of the stock bikes features. The Telaria battery like this one can hook directly up and will work and show battery percentage on your Telaria bike if you're using the 60 volt battery. Um, that can then be turn, turned off, turned on, depending on what control you have and, and how those communications work to make sure everything goes the way that you want it to. And then um, I, I guess last and, 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 and not least on the, on the continuous improvement side, we have the two year warranty so that we can make sure that you guys have the best product that there is available. So all these cells are still the same, same types of cells, same discharge ratings that we've had. Um, and that two year warranty is in place to make sure that everybody is gonna continue to have a good product if you have any issues with it and it'll get fixed, um, it'll get repaired and it'll get sent back to you. 
We do everything we can to, to be as on the ball, um, responding to customers as we can. We obviously have different people around the world that are distributors and dealers for EBMX. If you guys are having any sorts of issues with any products, please contact the people that you bought it from. EBMX and myself will be sitting behind there helping as we need. We can remotely get in and help with things, but there's a lot of different steps that we can do to get you guys back on your feet and teach you how to use these products um, to get into this BMS app and your dealers can help you with that. One of the things we wanted to show you guys is how the cells are chosen for these batteries. We don't just grab every single cell, um, you know, grab the first 20 that we find and stick them together. These cells are actually measured, um, checked for voltage, and we, we have them in the factory all hooked up together um, side by side, and we basically try to pair cells with, with other cells that are as, as equally matched as we can. So we lay them all out in racks, um, try, try charging, charging them up some, getting them equally balanced, and then we pick the ones that are to be the best pairs with each other, and those are what make it into production. Another thing we wanted to show you is the process of laser welding. I know it's a little hard to see the bottom of that battery, um, but just have a look at this video. This is one of, one of the guys we have um, in China that's doing the laser welding on the cells. So he he's holds it in place, and um, basically with, with a, pair, a little pair of tweezers, and the laser welding machine just goes ahead and stitches that together, which is an extremely robust way of, of holding these cells. An another really good thing that we do is vibration testing on all these. And, and every different iteration of the battery, we've put on a vibration machine and just smashed it as, as hard as we can. We take the vibration machine, turn it up to the max, and then just let the, the, let the batteries shake on there. They're bolted down onto a platform. And this is it's pretty industrial sort of piece of machinery that's used for testing car parts and stuff. Um, let you have a look at the video that we have of it and, and you can see how violently these, these batteries are being shaken around. We, we have the, the app hooked up to the BMS and we can monitor in real time and check the cells, make sure there's no voltages or no, no variance and that these cells are, you know, they're staying intact, they're staying healthy um, while this testing is going on. And I also wanted to give you a, a, a quick little look at how these batteries are potted. So we've got the battery, we've got the basically put all together like this. Um, from, from here, it's gonna go into the case. The case is gonna be filled up about a third of the way with, with potting compound batteries then put in. Um, and then the battery and the case are put onto a vibration machine. And that's continually vibrated as the battery is topped up with potting compound. It's set, set aside to let it sit, any other air um, or bubbles come up. And then it's gone back on the vibration machine and it gets topped up the rest of the way. Um, this, this, is, this is really key in, in our batteries construction, in the longevity and the life of these batteries. To be potted like that is, is the best way to, to lock things in and to ensure that there's gonna be no movement, no issues. We don't suggest you guys go out there and, and, and hit the battery on the sides with rocks or sticks or drop the batteries, but you know, riding a bike hard sometimes, it might fall on its side. You know, your battery might fall out of your hand while you're walking or something, and to know that that battery is still gonna be okay um, I think it's a big relief to a lot of people and we're definitely confident with the, with the strength of these batteries. All right guys, that's pretty much the rundown I wanted to go through, given a bit of information on the different aspects of the batteries, how we build them, um, what the cells can do, and sort of show you the, the evolution that we've come through to where we are now. So um, if you have any questions, have any comments, leave them, leave them in our channel there. Um, get a hold of us and ask. I, I hope this was educational. I hope you guys got something out of this and I look forward to showing some more different product reviews for you guys soon.